In this video, I'm going to show you how I make these plates and bowls, uh, how I decorate them, how I fire them. They're all uh, made in the Raku technique. Uh, if you enjoy this video, please uh, like us on uh, YouTube. All right, this video is really about Raku, how I make things to be fi Raku fired, how I decorate them, and how I fire them. Uh, but the first thing I want to talk about a little bit about is the clay. What's Raku clay? Raku clay is just uh, clay that has some, a certain amount of grog in it, and uh, so it can stand the thermal shock. And the way I I make sort of make my own Raku clay, I, what I do is I take all my scraps from my other things that I make out of clay uh, that are, you know, maybe uh, stoneware or whatever, and even if they're all different colors, different kinds of clay, I just throw it all in a bucket and I fill it with water. I leave it for about a month or so, and I might have to put a little bit of extra water in as I go, as the time passes. And when it's nice and, and, and mushy, I throw it out on my, on my plaster table, and then I throw in some grog. Uh, probably, for a bucket this size, I would probably throw in maybe three cups of grog or sand. Either one seems to be able to take that thermal shock of uh, the Raku firing. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take this clay that I recycled and I'm going to ro roll it on a slab roll, make a slab and I'll show you how that works. All right, so here's my clay. It's on the slab roller. I like to have a little bit of texture on the bottom of my pieces when I raku. So I'm going to use this, I don't know, I think it's an old sack of, from a sack of oranges to put a texture on the back. There we go, that's, that's the slab I'm gonna use. It's about 3 eighths of an inch thick. Okay, I, I took the uh, slab off of the slab roll and brought it over here. Normally I would do it right on the slab roller, but I wanted to demonstrate for you so the camera can see it. And uh, you can do this a lot of different ways. You can make a stencil you can just measure it or eyeball it i just do it this way it seems to be easy because on this particular one i want it to be a square so that's pretty square normally i would have done this with a lot less clay but this is just for a demo so there we go that's all there is to it to get that like that and I'm going to wedge this up and use it for another piece here. All right I want to turn this flat slab into a bowl or a plate or something like that so I have a slump mold here. This is just plaster that I poured into a big bowl and let it dry and it makes a nice hump so I'm going to set this on here so it has the shape of the bowl and I'm going to let this dry maybe 20 minutes a half an hour let it set up a little bit then I'm going to put a foot on it okay so I got this on the potter's wheel so I can uh, attach a little bit of a foot to it I like to just uh, use a little slip and a little comb is the way I do it and then I have a, a coil here that I've already made and I just set a coil on top which I guess is the bottom of, of my plate and just get it to turn around a little bit and then it'll it will attach nicely to the bottom of 
my plate. You can also do this by, you know, instead of this style of a foot, you can also roll out some little balls and put three balls on the bottom for feet. Uh, if, you're, if you do that, make sure you use three, not four. If you do four, it'll be tippy. If you do three, it'll sit flat. All right, so now it definitely has to stiffen up. My plate is dried now for about an hour. It's fairly uh, leather hard. I cleaned all the texture off from the slab roller blanket. And the next part I'm going to do is paint some porcelain on here. Uh, people always ask me, how do I get my Raku crackles so white. It's because I always use porcelain. That's why it doesn't matter what color clay I use at the beginning. It's going to be white at the end. I'll do this twice. I'm going to let it dry. Then I will uh, put another coat. My plate has now dried overnight. It has two coats of porcelain slip on it. And what I do to decorate is I'll make a stencil and lay it down where I want it on my plate, draw around it with a pencil to make a contour line, and then with a, a brush and underglaze, I paint the bird on the plate. It takes at least two coats, three is better to get rid of the brush strokes uh, after it's been fired. Now the plate I made has been bis fired at 1800 degrees, about 1830 Kono 06. I made an extra one just to show you a couple of, of glazing uh, techniques I use. Now, the glaze I'm using is probably the simplest glaze you'll ever come across. It's only got three ingredients. It's 80% Gersley borate and 20% nepheline cyanide, and it's got some water in it. That's all that's in here. Now, the simple, obvious way to do this is to just simply paint the uh, clear glaze all over and... Uh, that's done. Or you can do another way that's something I like to do, which is be a little bit more expressive with it and uh, let the brush strokes maybe show a bit. And uh, you can you can make a little bit more interesting pattern. Now, the way this is going to fire is the uh, where I just painted the glaze on it's going to turn white with some crackle in it and the part that's left un naked here is going to turn dark dark black and then uh it'll be fired in a raku kiln now following this is going to be just a little short clip of me taking a some pieces out of a raku kiln so for those of you who don't know how raku works uh you'll be able to see it Basically, it comes out of the kiln while it's glowing red hot, put into a smoky fire. The uh, clay will, I mean, sorry, the glaze will, will crackle when it hits the cold air a little bit. It'll crack, and then the smoke from the fire will go into the cracks, make it very decorative.
Here's a finished piece. It was created by painting porcelain slip on greenware. Then underglaze was painted on, which you see is the birds and the orange dot. It was bisque fired. Then a clear glaze was, was painted sort of splashed on top. Then it was fired. The fired piece, the clear glaze turned white with crackle. The black around it is from the clay being put into a real smoky fire uh, after it was taken out of the raku kiln while it was still hot.